Hey guys, RMA Arms here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Smith & Wesson MMP 45 Shield. This little pocket 45 is a great little shooting gun. We're gonna kinda of put it through its paces and uh, put some rounds through it and tell you guys what we think, give you our opinion, and uh, we'll let you know how we like it. Okay, so here we have the MMP 45 Shield. Let's safety check it real quick. There's nothing in the chamber, there's nothing in the magazine. Should be good to go. Okay. So, use, what would you buy the MMP45 Shield for? First off, how it was designed, I would feel, it'd be concealed carry, CCW. It's very thin, as you can see, look at that grip, it is tiny. Pretty light for being a 45. You could also use this for home defense though, because it has seven plus one of capacity with the bigger mags, six plus one of capacity with the smaller mags. A 45, that's an adequate amount of rounds for home defense. You also might want to use this as a truck gun, you know, or maybe a bug out bag, something like that. Also, this might be a good backup gun if you're a police officer or something like that. So yeah, those would be the reasons that I would use the MMP 45 shield. Okay, so as I was saying, it's a pretty small gun. Let's get out our calibers here and we're gonna measure this thing at the widest point, which would be, I think it is where this uh, slide release sticks out. Let's see how wide this is. 1.03 inches so 1.03 is what i got here very thin gun which is great if you're carrying inside the waistband whether it's appendix or whether it's on your hip you want it to be very thin okay how wide a gun is makes it really hard to conceal the other thing that makes a gun hard to conceal is the weight because if it's sitting on your belt or or wherever all day you're going to want a light gun because i'm telling you it adds up so let's just check this out real quick as my scale warms up here. Comes in right about one pound, seven ounces. What's that, like 23 ounces, somewhere in there. So that's uh, pretty light for, for, like I said, for a compact 45, that's a pretty good size. You get decent capacity. I mean, you get 1911 style or, or amount capacity, seven plus one would be eight rounds. So it's really not that bad, but it comes in a really good tight little package. When you put the six round magazine in there, it's even easier to conceal, it's even smaller to conceal, and I personally, as you can see here, I can still get four fingers on this gun. Now, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, I don't have banana hands like Tony Robbins, but I can get four fingers on there, and with the extra, the base plate on here for one more round, it's way, it's, it's a lot easier, there's a lot of room. So, um, pretty cool that they provide both options in the gun. The magazines are great, they're high quality, they look good, they, they, they pop out very easy, they drop free. I do have one critique though, they are a bear to load, okay? They're just really tight. A lot of compact 45s are like that, so it's not a deal breaker. I do not understand their magazine capacity system. They both say six plus one, but you just can't get that other round in here when this is fully loaded. Um, so I guess they just made the same mag and they figured you'd figure it out. So with the base plate though, another round fits in here. Without the base plate, it still says plus one, but you can't actually fit one in there. Seven plus one in a, in a gun this size to me is great. I mean, we're talking about 45 here. That's a lot of rounds in a compact package like this. So I think good for you, Smith & Wesson, good job, because I would feel very comfortable with seven plus rounds of 45 on my hip. I mean, that's a lot of options. Uh, you know, God forbid you ever need this thing to use it to defend your life, but that is a decent amount of options. Plus, if you were to throw one of these in your pocket or have a mag carrier or something like that, that's, that's quite a few rounds. So good job, Smith & Wesson. I like the capacity. So the accuracy on the MMP 45 shield, look at this barrel. Okay, the barrel is pretty short. It's a very short barrel, but I will tell you that the accuracy is actually pretty stinking good. From 10 yards is what we were shooting today, the accuracy was great. Okay, when I did my job, the gun did its job. Okay, it has great sights, which helps with accuracy. I love the metal three dot white sights. I think that MMP or Smith & Wesson, I should say, did a great job with the sights. But accuracy with the barrel, it, I think it's been really good. For a CCW gun, for a compact carry gun, man, I just, I don't know how much more you can ask for. You know, no, it's not gonna win any competitions for you know, an IDPA match or anything like that probably, but for what it's designed for, for concealed carry, it's perfect. It, it does its job just fine. And we even, my first uh, attempt at shooting at 50 yards, you'll see in the video, I hit the target first time, which was just a, a silhouette steel target, which isn't that hard to do, but it was pretty cool I did it my first time. So good job on the accuracy department there. Okay, so the ergonomics on the MMP 
they're good. Okay, they're good. They're, this is a good feeling gun. Um, the the grip angle is good if you're unless you're like died died in the wool for a Glock. I think it's a very comfortable grip angle. And uh, let's talk about the stippling here, okay? Because that's one of the first things that almost everybody talks about is the stippling or the texture of the frame right here on the grip, okay? To me, it's really nice. It's it's a really nice feeling grip. I, I have a lot of traction here. Um, it's not too aggressive, but it is, It I mean, it's not gonna slip out of your hand, that's for sure, okay? Now, when it comes like this from the factory with this aggressive texturing on the front, back, and sides, okay, I like it. But let's say that if you weren't a huge fan of the way of it, it feels, okay? Let's say you didn't love the way it feels. It's great if you love it because then it's already done for you. But if you don't love it, you're kind of stuck with it. I mean, maybe you could sand it down or something. I don't know. I haven't really looked into that. But um, so pro and con there, depending on how you like it. I know that the guy that owns this gun, he says he carried a concealed carry. And it actually ended up when he was doing a lot of training with it, as you should any gun that you're going to carry, you should train with it a lot. He actually kind of got of a rash or, or a rub on his hip from pulling it out and putting it back in so much because of how rough that texture was. Now, he did say, however, that, you know, and it makes a good point, if your life depends on it, you're not gonna care about that, okay? Because that gun's not gonna fall out of your hands or whatever. So you need to feel one of these things and decide how you like it. I, I seem to like it. Now, carrying it every single day for years, it may wear on me. I haven't done that yet, but texturing is nice. So one of the guys at RMA Arms here, he was talking about the slide release. He didn't love the positioning of it because when he was shooting, okay, he kept accidentally hitting the button down and it wouldn't, the, the slide wouldn't lock back. No matter what happened, the slide wouldn't lock back. So um, because his, where his fingers were, if they're resting on that, it just makes sense. So you could say that's a, a, a boo-boo on him, but uh, he just wanted me to throw that in there. Maybe you need to feel it and see if, you know, if you're shooting it, will your thumb hit it? Will your hand hit it? I don't know. Um, I didn't seem to have a problem with that, and I do on some guns. I've seen that before. But uh, yeah, it, it can be an issue maybe, so maybe take a look at that. All right, so also on ergonomics, they have milled the slide slightly to add for front press checks. But these aren't the biggest grabs right here. I kind of wish they made them all the way through instead of just the tiny part, but you know, maybe it's good for some people. I just kind of wish they would have made them bigger like these back here. These are great. There's so much traction on these back here, the way that they're scalloped or however you say that. But for me, I wish that they were a little bigger. It's almost kind of silly how small they are. But other than that, the ergonomics are great. That'll bring us to trigger. Okay, so once again, let's safety check it. Okay, nothing in there. So you pull it and you hit a wall just like every other striker fired gun and then it's going to break free. All right, I think the trigger pulls somewhere around six, seven pounds. I, I don't know exactly, but now let's check the reset because the reset on some of the early generation MMPs was, the reset was just mushy. Okay, let's just state it. Okay, but on this one, I think it's a little bit better. Let's check it out. Did you hear that? You hear that click? Okay, now you're ready for your next shot. There's the reset and bam. So the trigger has been improved, especially since the first MNPs, but it, it could be a little bit better maybe. I seem to enjoy the trigger. I liked it. I was shooting pretty well with it right out of the box. As soon as I picked this thing up, um, I shot decent with this thing. They've got a nice little undercut trigger here. Um, that's a nice feature. Uh, the mag isn't too hard to get to with, for me, I can still shoot and get to the mag, um, have my hand in the proper position and get to the mag release. So that's nice. Not a huge fan of the trigger guard, but you know, it's really not that big of a deal. It's nice and round, I guess, for concealed carry. When you're looking at a compact 45 like this, a lot of people might be scared away by recoil. Now I understand if you want to carry a nine, 380, 40, whatever it is, um, I understand that, but if you're, if you're interested in the 45, don't be afraid of the recoil on this gun. I had the, um, the pleasure of shooting a small compact, I forget what you call it, but it was like a three inch barrel, 45, 1911 style gun um, this last week. My gosh, that thing had a lot of recoil. It was not that much fun to shoot. Maybe it was a brand, that, I don't know. This thing doesn't have nearly as bad uh, felt recoil or uh, muzzle flip. It, it's kind of funny because you would think a gun this small and such a big caliber, you couldn't shoot all day, but that's kind of how I felt today shooting it, putting a couple hundred rounds through it was, 
I was fine. You know, it, it is a lot of, re it, you feel, you know, you, you realize you're shooting a 45, that's for sure. But it's not that bad. It's actually pretty fun. So um, check out the video. You kind of tell that the, the 45 um, shield is pretty manageable when it comes to recoil and uh, muzzle flip and all that. All right, so let's take this thing apart real quick. So first thing we're gonna do is drop the mag and uh, lock the slide back here. And then we're gonna take this lever and we're gonna swing it down. Okay, it's pretty tight actually. Um, and then we're going to release that. I think there's a way you can do it without pulling the trigger. I just don't know it. So pull the trigger and the slide should come off. These are the internals of the gun. So you got the uh, striker system back here and you got the rails that the slide rides on. You've got the um, recoil spring and then the barrel just pops right out after you've taken that down and you're ready to go. So you're field stripped, right? And like I said, look how short that little barrel is, but it's actually pretty accurate, which is amazing. So nothing too crazy here. Uh, it is, it's a little dirty. I mean, it looks just like every other striker fired gun, just in a very compact form, does it not? It's got the captured guide rod uh, right here, kind of like Glock Gen 4s or something like that. And uh, yeah, so nothing too crazy in here. So let's reassemble it. So we're just gonna drop the barrel into the old slide here. Then we're going to put the fatter side of the recoil or the guide rod in here and that rests right up against this little notch in the barrel here you can see how dirty it is and then uh, we're going to put them right on the rails and lock it back and then flip this up and then we are going to check for function good to go so that gun is put back together pretty easy to field strip kind of mindless okay so accessories there's actually not as many out there right now of for the 45 as the let's say the MP shield 9 and 40 i think it's just because a little bit newer um maybe not they haven't sold quite as many yet but i'm sure that'll come out and it's still it's it's a very popular gun it's just maybe not be the most popular so i think more options will come out but you can get holsters for it you can get mags for it you can get sights for it there's quite a bit of stuff you can do to this. Maybe not the most in the world, but there is plenty of options out there to keep you happy and to let you tinker with your firearm if you would like to. Also, now we're gonna talk about the reliability. As you would expect with a shield, it's been 100%. Now we didn't do a torture test and drop it into cement or anything like that, wet cement. Everything has run completely smooth, like I said, as you would expect from a good gun like this. So the price of the MMP 45 shield for this reliable of a gun, for this uh, comfortable of a gun, for the features that it has, to me, it's a really good priced gun. I will tell you this though, this is kind of funny. The guy that bought this, bought this a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I guess now, and he paid $420 for it. I think that is a reasonable price for this high quality of a gun. Now, what's sad for him and kind of funny for me is a few weeks later, Smith & Wesson has put out a mail-in rebate for all the shields, I believe, of $75 or something. I know that after the mail-in rebate, you can get these things for around $299. I'm sorry, $275, which you can get these things for. So my buddy kind of got uh, the shaft there, but if you pay $299 or $275 for this gun, wow, what a great stinking deal. There's not that many other guns out there for under $300 that would be better than this, in my opinion. I don't know what, how long that's lasting, but I think till June. And uh, if you can get this gun for $275, wow. So overall impressions of the MMP Shield 45. There's other options out there in this category. Compact, concealed carry, single stack. 45 like maybe you might want to look at the xds maybe you might want to look at um, a car 45 there's other options out there available but pick those up go to the gun store check them out and check this out as well because i honestly think this is one of the best compact 45s you can get it shoots very very well like i said we've had no problems with it you know i don't know what you're looking for but to me, if, if this is a gun that you're interested in, I would definitely go play with it at the gun store. And uh, if you have anybody, a friend that has one or have anybody that will let you borrow one or maybe you can rent one at a gun, gun range, um, a shooting range, check it out. Um, I would not be disappointed in carrying this thing. I would recommend this. I give it three gold stars out of three, uh, whatever, or five thumbs up, whatever you want to say. But um, great little gun here. Good little compact uh, single stack 45. Check it out. And uh, thanks, guys. Remember to subscribe and to like uh, the video. 
And uh, if you have any comments about your Shield 45, how you liked it or how you don't like it or whatever, we'd love to hear that. Also, if any, have any um, recommendations of any more videos that we can do later on, any guns that we can review or something like that, we would love to hear those. But we appreciate it, and we'll see you at the next video.